welcome back to the workshop. Today I'm going to be making a box from this lovely piece of wood here. Now it's been about two months since I made anything in the workshop and that's just because I've been so busy with other commitments at the moment. However, I finally got some time to get back in here and making things. I've got a lovely table saw now, which I've just cut this on. First time I've used a table saw in the workshop and I'm really happy with it. So let's get going with this video. The first step of the project was to rip the board to 82 millimeters. This allowed me 2 millimeters for planing to get the board all square on all four sides. I did this using a number 5 plane and then checked for squareness with a square. I then marked some measurements onto the board of what I wanted my box dimensions to be. You can do whatever you want here, I just had a play around with a form that I liked. So it's been a long time since I've done any hand to woodworking, but I'm fairly happy with how this finger joint's gone. It's not perfect, there's a gap there, but I'm happy enough with it for now. I will sand it so it will improve in its finish because I'll glue it up and sand it so some of these gaps will get filled a little bit. But I'm fairly happy with that. So the first step to this finger joint is the laying out process. So to do that I'm just simply using a ruler, a pencil and an engineer's square. It really is as simple as it sounds. So we're going to do this one. So just to make sure I don't get confused I like to mark some lines across the pieces. So I've made my boards 80 millimetres in their width, so I'm going to do four joints, each at 20 mil. So the first step is really simple. Just mark intervals every 20 mil. So 40, 20, 40, 60, and 80. You only need to do this on one piece, by the way. Now we want to measure the thickness of our board. So this is 19 mil will have been planed down from 25mm, something like that. So, just double check, yep, we're exactly 19mm, which to be honest is what I would have expected. So then we want to mark a 19mm line on our board, and this will form the depth of our joint, so that's the line that we're going to work to, and then we've got our marks at 20, 40, 60 and 80. So now we're going to join all these lines apart, so we'll have our 19mm depth line. And then we'll have our 20mm line. Do that one again. Try and get fairly accurate of these lines because it will make your life easier. Less chiselling and all that. Don't mind chiselling, but sometimes it can be a bit of a faff. So... The better you do this stage, the less work you'll have to do later on. And then we'll do the same to this one. So now we've got four boxes, essentially. Now what we want to do is carry these lines across to the other side. Like so. Carried across to the other side. And again, mark your 19mm depth line. It's just repetition at this point. And we'll scribe that across. You could use a marking knife here. The only reason I don't want to is because it's easier for you guys to see if I'm doing it in pencil. The difference here is we'll be removing this piece and this piece. Make sure you mark an X. It will make your life a lot easier when you come to actually cutting them out because then you'll know what you're removing. And then likewise, we'll do the same on the other piece like that. So we now know the X's are the bits we want to remove. I then moved over to the bandsaw to cut out the waste material. Now, you could of course do this by hand, but I had a bandsaw so I thought I would use it. And then I used a coping saw to cut out any of the remaining waste material. Now, as you would expect, the joints do not fit together at the moment. They almost do, but not quite. So that's why we now need to chisel it to get them to fit together. I then cleaned up the joints using a chisel just to remove any of the excess material in order to get the best possible fit. I just played around until they fit together pretty well. I then moved on to the next joint, repeating the same steps, using the bandsaw to cut out the waste material. So I've cut all of the box joints now, or finger joints. Fairly happy with them, that's the bad one. But overall, not too bad. So we're now going to put some glue in it, leave it up in the clamps, go and have some lunch. As you've seen, before I put any glue on it, I did a dry fit just to ensure all the joints fit together as best as possible. I then used some Gorilla Glue, making sure to put lots of glue in all the joints, then using all the clamps I had, 
I made sure there was plenty of clamping pressure and left it to dry for a couple of hours. So we're now going to move on to making a base. Now I've got this piece of plywood, it's probably about 9mm thick, something like that. So I'm going to cut this out on the bandsaw quickly. I then cut out the base on the bandsaw, trying to get the lines as accurate as possible. So that's the plywood base, so it's, it's a fairly good fit. I'm not, too, I'm not too bothered about it being perfect, I think that's a decent fit. I then had to play around with some fake velvet that I had, which was self-adhesive, and I thought it would look quite good on the base of the box. So I did a test on a scrap piece of wood, and then decided it would look quite good on a box. So I moved on to cutting it out, sticking it onto the box base, and then glued it all together. So we're now going to move on to making the spindle legs. Now I was very kindly sent the chamfer plane by Seika, and I had a quick go with it, and it's absolutely brilliant. So we're going to have a go on the spindles, at hopefully creating some precise octagonal spindles. Now, the thing I like about this is you can get consistency. With a normal woodworking plane, it can be hard to get consistency when making spindles, because as you're planing, it's hard to make sure you're going the same amount, same number of passes, all these things, same angle that you're holding your plane at. This takes the guesswork out of it. Now, yes, it only does smaller projects, so it's not ideal if you're doing something big, but for stuff like this, it works really well. So, when I was squaring up the faces of the boards earlier, I couldn't use this because the blade's too small. However, for something like this, it will work perfectly. And I'm going to demonstrate that now. So, I've added this fence on the side, which will act as a guide rail. And as you can see, it really does help to keep it nice and square against the edge of something. So here, I should easily be able to put some pressure along this side and get a nice, accurate cut. The chamfer plane was really easy to use and left me with some really, really nice shapes that I could put onto the box. Okay, so I've had a quick go of the Seika chamfer plane, and here's some things I like and don't like about it. So firstly, we've got a very nice, accurate line here. Very, very smooth, very accurate, and the blades are very, very sharp. We've got very nice shavings here. So that's all good. The one thing I don't like, though, is the black lines it gives you. Now that's because, as you move it along, the surface of the tool is marking the wood, but to be honest, I'm going to be sanding anyway, and a majority of projects you will sand after you plane, so I don't see that as a problem. I also really like the fact you can do this with this, so if you set it up against something and use it as a stop, you can get these really nice angles in there, and this is probably about the maximum sort of depth of cut you could do, so it's more for smaller projects and, ach and achieving a nice chamfer, however it does what it says on the box, and it does leave an incredibly nice smooth finish. So thank you very much to Seika for sending out the chamfer plane. I look forward to trying it in more of my projects, and it does come with a variety of different cutters, so you can achieve lots of different types of cuts. So you've got all these different sorts of blades. So which was the one I was using a couple of days ago, this one. So you can also get these round ones, which do a slightly different chamfer, because you can move it along like that, and then you can just take little bits off at each time. And my favourite cutter though is just this square one, works the best and achieves a really, really nice finish. So thanks again to Seika for sending out the chamfer plane. I then continued the process adding a chamfer onto each of the four corners of the square stock. This then produced octagonal spindles which I could then cut up in order to make some nice decorative feet for the box. I think this really added another level to the box and I'm really happy that it looked good. So whilst the chamfer plane will take longer than an ordinary plane, what we can see is that it's produced a very, very nice octagonal spindle, and I'm really, really happy with it. Now, like any plane, you can only take a certain amount of material off each time, and a couple of times I did take a little bit too much material off, which did result in a bit of tear out. But if you take the right amount of material off, you can get an incredibly nice finish, and as you can see, we've got some really nice shavings. So all in all, a decent tool. I'll leave a link below to it. Thank you very much to Seika for sending it out. This project's all about me trying new things, so we're also going to be trying something I've never used before, Rubio Monaco. I had a quick test on this, now I don't have the accelerator for it, but it doesn't seem to need it, so we're going to chuck that onto there, let it dry, and then we'll glue the feet on. Okay, now I'm really excited to try this, so give it a shake first. As I said, I did try it on a tiny bit of the beach, but I really want to see what it looks like on the whole thing. Right, that should do it. Now, yeah, you should probably wear gloves with all this stuff, but uh, it's only oil at the end of the day. It will come off, so just hope I don't spill it over myself. 
or over the box where it shouldn't be on for that matter. Right, start with this side. Hopefully you guys can see that. Tilt it down a bit. Oh, well, it's already on my hands more than the box. So far, so good, I'm liking it. As I said, not used this stuff before, so it's all a bit new for me, but I like trying out different products. So hopefully this will be something I can incorporate into more projects now because I don't really have a go-to oil apart from chestnut products food safe oil, but you don't want everything food safe all the time. Sometimes it's nice just to have a really high quality oil that you can use. That looks absolutely awesome. It's really interesting. This piece of beach is particularly nice because it's actually got a load of sap in it, but I think it's really quite a nice piece. That looks absolutely lovely. I really like all this character. It's a really nice piece of wood, this. Don't think kitchen roll was the best sort of thing to use to apply this, but it's fine. I've really enjoyed doing a box project. I haven't done a box for about a year now, and to be honest, I've missed doing woodworking rather than wood turning all the time. So I am planning on getting back into a bit of woodworking again. So to all of those who subscribed when I used to do woodworking, well, it's coming back. I'm going to be doing some more again. Actually, no reason why I can't do the inside now, is there? Then it can all dry. Right, once I've let this sit for five minutes, I'm going to get a clean cloth and just give it a buff. Just remove any of that excess oil. I then cut some thin bits of the beach, which would create a frame which I could sit the ash into. Now I've been having a think about how to do the lid for this box. Now what I've decided to do is a mitre jointed lid with an inset panel. So what we're doing first is cutting the mitre to make the frame. Now the box itself is 19mm thick, so therefore these pieces needed to be 19mm thick. So I ripped them on the table saw, just ripped a long strip. Now I've cut these out, cut some mitres on the ends. So I've got the two sides, I need to cut the two other panels. I then cut out the frame, adding mitres onto each corner to produce a nice all-round finish. I then sanded the 45 degrees on the sander just to produce a nice crisp edge. I then glued it up, clamped it up, and then got the ash ready for burning. This part of the project was hugely fun, just experimenting around with the blowtorch, essentially doing some shoshugi bon, which is a Japanese style of finishing which looks really awesome. Okay, so with the top burnt quite sufficiently, we're now going to take a wire brush, brush off the loose debris, seal it, maybe wax it, and then we'll drop it into the frame. As I said, I then brushed away the loose debris with a stiff wire brush. That looks so cool. I think I might put a nice coloured wax or something on it. It looks so cool like that though. The final step is to inlay this burnt panel inside the frame. And to do this, I simply used a bit of glue and clamped it in. I then oiled both sides and made sure it was all nice and tight and didn't have any visible gaps. Now unfortunately there were a couple as it dried but to be honest I'm not too bothered about that, it doesn't affect the use of the box. Thank you very much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed watching me make this box. I had an absolute blast making it, it was really great fun, nice to try something different. I'm particularly happy with the joints on this box, they're much better than the usual ones I do. It's got a nice velvet inlay. And then we've got these lovely octagonal feet, achieved with the Seika chamfer plane, which you'll find a link in the description for. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it, and hopefully this will be the start of some more hand tool woodworking, and indeed some more videos. I know it's been almost two months since I posted the video, I've just been so busy with other things at the moment, I haven't had the time to be making videos. However, I've now got a little bit more time so I can start to try and get videos out a bit more. My aim is to, at the moment, have a month monthly sort of video and if I can ideally every two weeks but for now we'll see how it goes thanks once again for watching and I'll see you on the next one